Think about how inconvenient it is whenever the power goes out at home. You don't have hot water for showers, you're not able to cook, and the food starts to go bad in the fridge. Then imagine the scenario playing out for weeks or months and affecting the whole country like that. What are you gonna do for food? You can't go to the store because the store won't have any food. Most likely they'll be sold out or they will have already been looted of all their contents. So what are you gonna do? How are you gonna get food? Who's gonna help the government? Most likely they won't be able to. You can ask the people who were affected by Hurricane Katrina and in Puerto Rico how their government did for them. <clears throat> we don't think about this scenario um, unless the, with the power being off, unless we go to flip the switch and nothing happens. Uh, actually, this happened last week with us here. Uh, we didn't have power for about eight hours and I was trying to find candles or a flashlight and came up short. I started thinking we need to be more prepared. So that's when I started looking and I discovered that there's a community out there that's always prepared <coughs> and they're called the Doomsday Preppers. It's a subculture of people who stockpile food, uh, guns sometimes, ammunition. Many people think of Doomsday Preppers and just this idea that pops into their mind. <laughs> Somebody with a tinfoil hat, government conspiracies and things like that. But that's only a few of the, of the uh, doomsday preppers that fit that description. We're going to talk about some of the people that prep for the unknown <clears throat> and unknowable and how they increase their chance of survival. Who were the preppers? From those in the tinfoil hat to who stock up guns and ammo and gold, along with their food and water, on one end of the spectrum to those on the other end of the spectrum who consist of billionaire CEOs that prep as a sort of, as a hobby and as a sort of insurance because they have expendable income and they just want to be ready for what if, even though most of them don't think that what if will ever come. The wealthy preppers have taken up prepping. According to the website from Guardian.com, some billionaires have bought property in New Zealand and they keep their helicopters and their planes fueled and ready to go so they can bug out in style and convenience. Why prep? An increase in natural disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis has uh, made people think about being more prepared over the past few years. Also, some people prep due to the current political climate. Uh, according to the website, urbansurvival.com, uh, more people are prepping since the uh, election of Donald Trump because they're worried about the possibility of nuclear war <clears throat> with North Korea or Iran. On the other side of the coin, the people who were prepping in 2009 when Barack Obama was elected due to the fear that uh, there would be a nationwide ban on guns have relaxed their prepping, so the right has relaxed and the left has picked up prepping. How do they prep? The typical prepper has a stash of non-perishable food items, water filtration systems, livestock, gardening equipment, and uh, they also have a way to hunt for their food. The rich, however, have luxury bunkers with food and water systems that can last up to a year and a half. According to NewYorker.com, Reddit CEO Steve Huffman had LASIK surgery performed so he wouldn't have to worry about contact lenses should uh, doomsday ever get here. Is it worth it to prep for disasters? Depends on who you ask. Like I said earlier, since Donald Trump's election, those on the right have relaxed, those on the left have 
began to fret more for the apocalypse. According to OffTheGrid.com, there are many reasons it's a good idea to be prepared, from short-term power outages to major disasters. Just being prepared for anything will give you peace of mind, knowing you can take care of yourself or your family. So we've looked at what kind of person needs to prepare for disaster while they're preparing, what measures they're taking to be prepared, and it, it's worth going through the trouble for something that just might happen. So in conclusion, are these preppers paranoid zealots or should we all be prepared to some degree unless we risk being caught unprepared with nothing to save ourselves or our families if and when a disaster 